Uh, we're a company that makes the network work. We don't develop the call processing software like Broadworks itself. Um, we develop and uh, other tools and do other parts of the project like helping select the software, configuring the software and doing the integration and remediation uh, as we connect uh, things together. Uh, acceptance testing and compliance certification, so looking at whether you're really meeting all the standards that you need to uh, and want to meet. And then we do training and operations support as well. One app to rule them all, uh, connecting Broadworks to WebEx. Yeah, so WebEx is really Cisco's answer to Slack and Microsoft Teams and all the others. Um, now with WebEx, Broadworks service providers, they can offer an app that has huge levels of name recognition uh, among our end users. I think that's a great thing. Uh, WebEx for Broadworks, it integrates the WebEx apps with the cloud features. Uh, in, I'm sorry, it integrates the WebEx apps and cloud features with an existing Broadworks platform. Uh, it gives us access to all the Broadworks calling features. Uh, voice and video calling go through Broadworks or the Cisco cloud, depending on the configuration and whether you're calling a WebEx user or not. And then things like persistent chat, discussion groups, meetings, file sharing, whiteboarding, all those are done via the Cisco WebEx cloud. Right now, there are two apps. Uh, WebEx Teams and WebEx Meetings, and those two are in the process of becoming the one app to rule them all uh, called WebEx uh, for the mobile client that's uh, largely done. Um, I guess Microsoft won the battle for the Teams name, uh, but I think WebEx is still very, very recognizable. Um, I want to cover some of the implications of this move from UC1 to WebEx for Broadworks operators. Uh, the UC apps, UC1 apps will be going away, replaced by the WebEx apps. Uh, and as I said earlier, the collaboration features in WebEx are handled in the Cisco cloud. So this means that the Broadworks UMS, USS, and UVS uh, are no longer necessary for uh, the operator running with WebEx for Broadworks only. Uh, and this is they they those servers will probably be going away in the not too distant future as well um, this leaves us less servers uh, to manage as operators one note is that push notifications from the broadworks xsps for inbound calls they are authenticated and sent through cisco's nps proxy service uh, this means that operators no longer need to manage Apple and Google push notification keys. That's done directly with Cisco now. The XSP architecture is a bit different under WebEx. Um, we have dedicated XSPs for WebEx. That's strongly encouraged uh, by Cisco. The exception to this is the NPS. So the application server can only support one NPS cluster so that cluster is shared with any other apps that use NPS like UC1 Connect. Um, and a note to keep in mind is that NPS proxy requires that uh, the latest and greatest TLS and push settings be on your NPS. And so uh, the legacy apps will need to use them as well. There's a little bit of a migration there. It's not too bad. Um, and WebEx uh, for Broadworks dictates that the NPS XSPs must be distinct servers from the WebEx XSPs. And so uh, depending on how your XSPs are set up now, you might need to shift things around a little bit. Uh, let's talk about the apps. So end users get the Cisco branded WebEx apps from the respective app stores or from the Cisco website. Single sign-on integration is available. API provisioning of the WebEx users is also available. Uh, so these are distinct users from the Broadworks users. Mm -hmm. These are the WebEx users that are managed in the WebEx cloud. Flow through provisioning uh, is also available. Uh, to make this go, Broadworks is set up to use the WebEx URL for the integrated IMP service. So how this works is that when a user logs into the WebEx app that they downloaded off the web, uh, the app store, they log in for the first time using the service provider's domain that is claimed in the WebEx cloud. The WebEx user is provisioned in the service, service provider's organization in the WebEx cloud. That brings us to branding. Um, there are some branding options coming, 
but right now the roadmap is definitely not as extensive as UC1 Connect. Uh, the way this works is that uh, Cisco publishes the app and there's currently no option for service providers to publish their own app. Now, there are, there are pros and cons to this. A pro is that the service providers don't have to publish their own app and all the development and maintenance that comes along with publishing your own app. A con might be that we become dependent on Cisco's software release process, for better or for worse. The, the apps are released at a steady cadence. Uh, if there are bugs, then mid-cadence releases will come out. Um, but we have no control as operators. We don't have control over the cadence of the mobile apps uh, that are released in the app stores. There is some control over the upgrade cadence of the desktop clients, but not over the, the mobile apps. This is not exactly a, a branding, but kind of uh, related topic. One option we do have is to show or hide the WebEx call button uh, or option within the, uh, the client. So this means that you can steer all calls, even if one WebEx user is calling another WebEx user, you can steer that call through the Broadworks platform uh, in order to leverage all the features that you have for your users there, unified messaging, et cetera. And then finally, uh, one thing that is not in the app yet, but hopefully coming soon, is uh, Broad Soft, Broadworks Enterprise Directory integration. Um, so that when you're searching in the contacts in the WebEx app, it will also search through the Enterprise Directory as well. I hope that's coming soon. I think that this, this last one about Enterprise Directory really illustrates the point that WebEx for Broadworks is really first and foremost the WebEx app. And that app is currently in the process of gaining the Broadworks features that UC1 Connect had, but we're not all there yet. It's still in the process. Um, I will say though that in summary, I think, I think as we adopt WebEx for Broadworks, we can, we can really benefit from the Cisco WebEx name rec recognition. Um, we can also really benefit from all the fancy features that they have and are continuing to develop for this app. Um, it's come a long, long way. Um, I think it is also a classic example of as we move towards the SaaS model, we lose some control, uh, but we also gain some convenience. Mark, I'll uh, turn it back over to you for our last bit. We're running close on time. Yeah, um, <clears throat> thanks for covering that. I think uh, we've got time for some uh, comments. Brian, do you have any uh, follow-up thoughts um, or well, any, any thoughts on the WebEx Broadworks? I'm excited about, you know, this, the WebEx for Broadworks maturing and getting all those features um, and, and it being a real competitive um, tool to use for communication. Um, and I think having a solid enterprise directory is, is helpful because like it or not, you know, I don't keep up with people's phone numbers. There was a time when I used to, but that's becoming, you know, that's becoming more important. So um, having all of those features, including the enterprise directory is important to me. Yeah, one of the things that, that strikes me is the importance of software quality here. Um, you know, we wouldn't really be talking about software quality if nobody ever made any mistakes, but you know, occasionally everybody, even the top software companies in the world uh, will release some software that's got bugs in it. And so finding a kind of a happy medium between having the service provider make every test and every decision about it the way it is now with, with branded apps versus uh, having no control and no warning that anything's about to happen and no ability to, to control what your users are actually using. You know, somewhere in that space, there's, there's got to be some, uh, some happy place there. You know, one thing that I would love to see, which may be coming and may be available uh, to some, some carriers would be the ability to opt into a program where a service provider could get access to the software, maybe through the test flight or a similar program on Android, get access to the new software before Cisco publishes it as a non-emergency release, and then have option of testing it. Because it's really, this is about, not fun functionally about the software itself per se, but about the integration with my network. And so I'd like to have the ability to know that it's going to work in my network and all my quirks and all my, my PSD and gateways and all the stuff that I'm doing with my session border controller you know, I want to know that it's going to work in my exact environment. There's the bazillion possible combinations of configurations. And so I'd like to, and, and SIP is frankly, it's too flexible to kind of assume it's going to work all the time. 
um, even when you've got a, you know, a Cisco product talking to basically another Cisco product. So I think having some ability to do some QA up front will be, will be really helpful uh, for operators if that, be, if that becomes an option and if that can be maintained. We've got Cisco a few... does offer that option to some service providers. Yeah, okay. um, it's focused on, on the features and integration. Um, I think it's less a guard against um, yeah, software bugs and that kind of thing. Yeah. yeah, what you'd want to know is the you you want to be looking at the version of software that's that they're promising to release. So they say, you know, we're going to be releasing this on uh, December twenty first. So this is the version we're making it available today. You've got a week to test it, and on December twenty first, it's going live unless we get a you know an emergency follow up, uh, something like that. There's no new features here. This is just stable software. It works one hundred percent. That's uh, you want to be sure that you got that kind of um, that kind of testing. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. So if you guys have follow up questions, uh, here are our email addresses and phone numbers. We'll be glad to hear from you um, on anything you'd like to uh, talk about. I've um, also got uh, Trevor Wolford's contact information on there if you're looking to uh, discuss a new project. Um, but we're glad that you came. We will send out a follow up email and uh, let you know how to order your coffee mug. Um, and you get to pick the one that you want uh, to do that. And um, send any other questions that you've got and, and please come back next quarter when we'll be telling you about new things that have come out and the directions that Broadsoft, uh, Broadwork software is going in uh, next year. So thanks and have a good holiday season. Thanks, John. Thanks, Brian.